Let's talk about troubleshooting of the air conditioner. Let's start off with air codes. E1, that's going to be a failure of the indoor temperature sensor. Now that's either going to be located in the return air like we saw earlier or on the physical thermostat depending on when your system was manufactured. So depending on where that room air sensor is located is going to depend on what component you need to replace for this particular error code. If your sensor is located in the return air, you're going to need a new control box. If your sensor is located on the thermostat, you're going to need a new thermostat. E2 is your evaporator sensor or freeze sensor has become an open circuit. That's that sensor that we pressed into the coils. If that sensor becomes an open circuit, it is replaceable on its own. So an E2 is letting you know that that sensor has become an open circuit. One of two things will be the case. Either that connection has become loose or that sensor has gone bad. E3 is a loss of communication between the control box and the thermostat. Either those A and B communication wires that we wired up are backwards or there is some sort of damage in the wire between them. So simply go through and check both of those options and re repair as necessary. E4 and E5, those are for condenser and, condenser and outdoor ambient sensors. Now, currently our air conditioners do not have either of these sensors. The only time the control box is going to look for these error codes during normal operation is if you accidentally turn on the heat pump dip switch. If you turn on the heat pump dip switch, it will now start looking for these sensors and display the, the, uh, this error. So if you're getting an E4 or E5 error, make sure to check your dip switches that you didn't accidentally turn on the heat pump dip switch. The final error code you can get is LO. That's for low DC voltage to the system. DC voltage of below 10 volts. Simply look at your DC power source from the coach and, I, and correct it or correct the loose connection as necessary. Now that we understand error codes, let's talk about additional troubleshooting. For an air conditioner not cooling, we, that can be broken up into three separate camps. Either an air conditioner problem, a problem with installation, or an application issue. So let's talk about all of them. To start off, we want to test performance of an air conditioner anytime we have a customer complaint that the unit is not cooling correctly. To test an air conditioner, first off, we want to get it up and running and let it run for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, we're going to want to take an amp draw on the blue compressor wire. We're going to want to take a temperature reading up on the roof, just outside the air conditioner to know what our outside temp is. We're going to want to take a temperature reading at the intake or return air of the air conditioner to know what the temperature of the air going in is. And then we're going to want to take a temperature measurement at the closest discharge to the air conditioner, the closest discharging vent. From all this information, we'll be able to tell whether or not the air conditioner has a low charge of refrigerant. Ideally speaking, an air conditioner should cool the, the air coming in versus the air coming out 24 to 30 degrees. So the difference between the air coming in versus the air going out should be 24 to 30 degrees. Next, we're going to want to check for improper installation. Make sure that there is no leaking air between the return and discharge. Make sure our heat tape is in place, our divider is in place, and we've got our insulating PE foam. Make sure our sensors are in the correct location. Both our room air sensor and our freeze sensor need to be installed and working. Make sure our connections are good and solid. We don't want debris, dust, or have loose connections, which can cause intermittent issues. And lastly, check and make sure your coils, both on the evaporator and the condenser, are clean, undamaged, and will allow good airflow through. Application issues are going to be customer operator error as well as environmental concerns. If the RV is in the direct sunlight or painted a darker color that's absorbing too much sunlight, that can cause heat gain through the coach and cause the air conditioner not to be able to cool the coach down to the customer's desired temperature. If the vents are covered, which will cause a lack of airflow to the air conditioner, 
that will cause the unit not to cool the RV as effectively because the air cannot distribute through the RV as effectively. So we wanna make sure none of our ducts are crushed, they're all aligned correctly, and our customer has not blocked off any of the vents or closed any of the vents to the air conditioner. If the humidity is too high and the fan speed is too low, an air conditioner's first responsibility is to remove water from the air. So as our humidity increases, our air conditioner continues to have to work to remove that water from the air. If our fan speed isn't high enough to have air effectively travel through the air conditioner, then it cannot remove that humidity as effectively and will reduce performance. Entering and exiting the RV can cause both heat gain and humidity gain. As every time you open that RV coach door, heat and humidity enter the RV. So if you're entering and exiting the RV every three or four minutes, every single time that door is opening, you're introducing more heat and more humidity that that air conditioner must then overcome to get the coach to your desired temperature. Too many heat producing appliances or too many people in the RV can also cause the unit not to cool as effectively. Every standard adult produces about 7,200 BTUs of heat per day that that air conditioner must remove from the coach. So if you've got a ton of people in the RV all cooking dinner, you've got your all your burners of your range on and you've had the oven on for quite a few hours, this will all trap heat in the RV that that air conditioner must then work to remove. So now that we've learned about the different issues in troubleshooting trees that we have to go down. Let's go to the mock-up and test an air conditioner. So to test an air conditioner, we want to take an amp draw after 15 minutes, an exterior temperature up on the roof after 15 minutes, an intake temperature at the return air, and a discharge temp at the closest discharging vent to the air conditioner. To get an exterior temp, you're going to want to take that temperature anywhere up on the roof. Just again, we don't want to accept what the weatherman says the temperature is or accept the ground temperature. You want to physically climb onto the roof and get a real life temperature of that actual roof. Once you go ahead and get that roof temperature and the unit's been running 15 minutes, take your multimeter, clamp onto the blue wire coming onto the compressor and get yourself an amp draw. Once you have that amp draw, you can then go to the coach side of the air conditioner and get your intake and discharge temperatures. All right, now that we're down at the coach side, we're gonna wanna take our intake temperature either at this return air grill here or this return air grill here. We wanna take our discharging temperature at the forward or aft discharge vent for this particular ceiling assembly. If we had a ducted ceiling assembly, we would have our big return air here and then could take our discharge either at our air dump or at the closest vent to the air conditioner. Now, to know if your amp draw is within spec or not, you're going to want to compare the amp draw you're getting to the RLA of the compressor. The RLA is located on the data tag that we talked about earlier. RLA stands for rated load amps. It's the amount of amperage the compressor will pull at exactly 95 degrees ambient temperature, 50% humidity, and 115 volts AC. It's important to know that for every 10 degrees you go up in temperature, your compressor will pull an additional amp. For every 10 degrees you go down in temperature, the compressor will go down one amp. So let's look at her slide and we can go over some examples. Now that we have our amp draw on the AC, let's compare it to what it should be. To know what it should be, we wanna look at the RLA rating on the data tag for the air conditioner. The RLA stands for rated load amps. It's the amount of amperage the compressor is gonna pull at exactly 95, at exactly 95 degrees, 50% humidity, and 115 volts AC. It's important to know that for every 10 degrees warmer you get, you go up one amp, and for every 10 degrees cooler you get, you go down one amp from the RLA number. So let's look at some examples. Here we have a correct air conditioner, or one that's working pretty well. Our outside temperature on the roof is 80 degrees. 
Our intake temperature is 75 degrees. Our output temperature is 47 degrees. That's a 28 degree difference. And we have 11 to 11 and a half amps on the blue compressor wire. So if we look at our RLA, it should be 12.6 at 95 degrees. We're about 15 degrees less than that, so we should get about an amp and a half less, and we're getting right about an amp and a half less than the RLA rating, which means our air conditioner is working exactly the way it should. Here we have an incorrect air conditioner, or one that's not working within specification. Outside temperature is 80 degrees. Intake temp is 75. The discharging air is 73. So we have very poor performance between the intake and discharge. If we look at our amp draw, it is only 5.4, which is very, very low. This is an example of a unit that has lost its refrigerant. That amperage draw being that low is indicative there's no refrigerant in that system to provide resistance to that compressor so it does not have to work as hard. Now that we've tested the performance of an air conditioner, let's move on. We need to check proper installation. So make sure your foil tape is all along your seams and edges of your divider wall so no air can leak between the return and discharge. Any air that can leak between the return and discharge will continue to cool and can cause the unit to freeze up. Once the unit has frozen, no airflow will pass through the air conditioner and you will have a very, very poor performing air conditioner. As well as checking your foil tape, you want to make sure that your PE foam is in place and make sure any surfaces there are sealed with that foil tape. You don't, again, want any air exchanging between that return and discharge. On manual sealing assemblies, it's also important to make sure that that capillary tube thermostat is in the return air. Most customers will end up putting it through this grommet here and that will actually push that capillary tube towards the discharge air. As you can see right here, here we have our capillary tube, that's our discharging air vent. That capillary tube is gonna become very cold very quickly and turn that compressor off. Customers in this type of application or installation will complain that their compressor is constantly cycling on and off. And it happens quite quickly, about every two to three minutes. Make sure that this capillary tube is in the proper location in their return air. It'll look just like this. Finally, since we've tested our air conditioner itself and made sure our air conditioner is working correctly, we've made sure that it is installed correctly, and we've checked our application for anything that can cause issues, we're gonna lastly make sure that the control box is working correctly. To do this, you'll either use a multimeter and check continuity or a test light. Between your separate functions, you're gonna to wanna to go between the function you wanna test and the white neutral. Your test light should light up or your multimeter should display continuity. Those are the two ratings you wanna look for when testing the control box. You do not wanna simply measure for voltage.